Hello and welcome back to the port. I'm Gav Major and this is Amateur Reports. Amateur Reports is your gameplays with my commentary and today we have a submission from Eternal Abyss and he is playing in the TN7 United States Premium Cruiser Azur Lane Baltimore. Now the difference between the Azur Lane Baltimore and the actual Tetri Baltimore <laughs> Practically, they are identical. Uh, the only difference that really separates them is because the Azure Lane Baltimore is a premium. She obviously does have that increased credit and XP earning potential. As a tier 7 premium, uh, she has an increased credit earn of about 15%, and she also gets an additional 25% base XP, which uh, as a premium will be straight away converted into elite XP, therefore, uh, means that that can then be converted into global XP via doubloons at a later time if you so wish. Now this is a game of Domination on Tears of the Desert and it's a tier 6 and 7 game. On the enemy team we have a Mayuku, a Belfast, an Atlanta, a Sieg Freak, a Hippa, a Hood, a Turpitz, a Massachusetts and a Massachusetts. And then we have the Eastern Dragon Mayuku uh, spotted in the centre so we're going to see if we can take some advantage of that. And you note that uh, Turnabis started the game with armour piercing loaded and he's getting uh, some nasty hits on that. Uh, Mayuku taking it down by about 8,000 HP, which is a very nice opening body to the game. So we see we've got ourselves a Hipper and a Hood working over here. We also see a smoke screen. Now we know there's no destroyers working in this game, so therefore looking at the enemy team, the only thing that's got smoke is the Belfast, so we know we've got the Belfast working over here on this flank. Now while uh, Spotted mm, radar definitely confirming the uh, presence of the Belfast, and therefore, Turner Best turns on his, uh, his own radar and it lights up the uh, Belfast as well. Uh, it's quite interesting to see this uh, very pretty uh, animation that you do get when you do have a PS4 Pro or some of the higher quality consoles where you get that lovely green light up of your uh, radar range. Unfortunately, you can't see it if you're on like a normal console or something like that. So the hip has gone out wide, and that just leaves the hood and the Belfast tucking in quite close on the uh, side of the objective. On the uh, friendly team, we have a York, a York, a Fiji, a Megami, Turnabiss and his Azur Lane Baltimore, a Sharnhorst, and three Massachusetts. So uh, this was captured uh, just as the C3 campaign kind of started, but when there was still quite a lot of Massachusetts kicking around in the uh, matchmaking. So, the, uh, the hip is kiting away and getting right to the edge of the map. Now, this will be a, almost a good point where probably the hipper should go quiet and maybe reposition himself because he's going to find himself running out of room to move and therefore he's going to get worked over. Turnabiss has got himself nicely tucked in here. He's got the iron to his left, so that's keeping the bow fast and the hood away from him while he's just nosing in and working that hipper over. Fingers crossed, uh, should be getting the cap soon, although um, it all depends on how often he gets reset. Now the Belfast starts to flex around here. This is a really strange move from the Belfast, because the Belfast doesn't have torpedoes. The Belfast knows exactly what's going on around here, and he just starts getting worked over by a friendly Massachusetts and or Supply Eternal. Now that first volley, uh, he's only getting uh, two over pens and two pens. However, that second volley gets him assisted out, and it's not going to be long until the Belfast is gone because the Belfast does have quite a. The Citadel can sit quite high, so it's always easy to find. Now, I'm uh, quite surprised that he did get some overpens uh, against that Belfast, uh, considering his uh, commander traits. So, uh, commander wise, obviously, he has taken the Azur Lane Baltimore very much wide. We're here in this. Uh, Japanese commander voice in the background. Now uh, he has her ranked up to level uh, 16, legendary 2. And the skills he's using are Burn It Down XXL and Igniter. So that's one of the reasons why he's uh, using high explosives quite a lot as well as armor piercing, because he has also taken AP or absolute ammunition, I guess you could say. Now this is a unique skill uh, for the Zerling Baltimore commander, and it improves the armor penetration of the AP shells by plus 7%. Um, however, it reduces the uh, the fuse time of the armor piercing shells by 40%. So it should be, basically it should punch through thicker armor um, and detonate quicker inside that armor. Um, and then furthermore, uh, you have to consider it is an American cruiser, therefore it does have that super heavy AP with those uh, better ricochet angles. So it does make the AP on the Baltimore 
very, very threatening, I guess you could say. You can see he's already up to five citadels. Uh, furthermore, he's taken fixated and fully packed, so focusing on the guns uh, with fixated, getting that accuracy uh, nicely tight and in, and then also fully packed for the additional uh, radar, sonar, and heal. Uh, very useful, especially on that hill. And uh, the interesting one is his inspirations. He's taken uh, the Zerlane Scharnhorst, uh, Mastery 16, and Norman Scott, Mastery 17. Uh, now, obviously, the Zerlane Scharnhorst will reduce the dispersion, while uh, Norman Scott improves the accuracy. So, making these guns incredibly accurate, almost making it where the shells will land exactly where you tell them. Going against, uh, up against his hood, making sure that he's not exposing too much of an angle to the hipper, which is off to his starboard quarter, um, but also staying nose on to the uh, hood. One of the nice things about the bolt is uh, her armor scheme is very, well, very similar, I guess you could say, to the witch. To, uh, she's got that very thick barrel, which means that she can ricochet 15 inch guns in the front. Unfortunately, it's not thick enough to ricochet 16 inch guns, so you're going to have to pick your fights carefully when it comes to deciding to bow tank an enemy battleship. In this situation, Hood's only got 15 inch guns, so he's in a nice situation here. We should be able to wrap up the Hood with a fire that he managed to set with his high explosives earlier. There she goes, earning himself kill number two. Now, the Hipper's uh, pushing right off, and I don't really blame him when you consider the. Uh, the amount of battleships that are working this flank, so eternal is now snoting. If we look at the enemy team on the minimap, you know the enemy team have a very heavy presence at Alpha. They actually have had a heavy presence at Alpha pretty much throughout this entire game. But they've not captured Alpha. It's really strange. They've they've dominated over there and they've uh, mopped up some ships, but they haven't exactly pushed in and started the cap. Uh, meanwhile, they've got a cruiser in the centre, which is uh, Capturing the Bravo objective, uh, I'm sure it won't be much of a spoiler alert that, to let you know that is a Sieg Freak, which is uh, securing the cap at the moment in there. So let's see, we've got Massachusetts there, we've got a Sieg Freak there, and I think it's a turf it's behind the Sieg Freak. Gonna have to keep one eye on the Massachusetts, obviously 16 inch guns, that's going to be able to pretty much overmatch the Baltimore regardless, however, um, as long as the Massachusetts is distracted, he should be okay. And here he slows it down, the reason being is he doesn't want to push out too far with that hipper off to his starboard quarter. Um, he doesn't want to be exposing his broadside to the hipper, um, the hipper will very much take advantage of that. Firing uh, HE on the C3, getting a fire, switching to AP, expecting the C3 to stay broad, but it looks like she's tucking it in. Massachusetts nearly finished off. So here is just in a slightly precarious situation, almost like hoping the uh, Massachusetts doesn't realise he's open. Uh, don't want to overexpose himself against the hipper. The uh, Sea Creek, uh, I'm not sure if that's an accidental bump into the island or whether it's a deliberate one, but he's now stuck himself broadside on. And you'll note that um, I don't think he gets a citadel against the Sea Creek, even though it's broadside on. I think he just works it over. Massachusetts is now gone, which is going to buy Eternal some breathing space. And the hipper's now gone, so again, bringing in out some more breathing space. Now, everything that is up against him is now towards his front, which is more easy for him to control. Still working over the C3. And there we go, wrapping her up. But you may note you did get a single citadel there. But when the shells do go through, they do really hurt. That's one of the advantages. Um, you're always making sure that you can punch through thick armor and make sure you detonate inside the enemy ship. And an armor piercing shell will do more damage than the high explosive shell. So working over the turpits, aiming for the uh, the deck line slash upper armored belt. So uh, again, aiming for that slightly thinner armor. You're not going to be getting cisdales or anything like that. Uh, so you might as well just aim for what armor you can penetrate. So here he's trying to get the bow. Obviously the bow plating's a bit thinner. I think he just about tickles it with his HE. Very nice. Now, going back to the minimap, you'll note that the enemy Atlanta has just been spotted for the first time in this game. Up until this point, it was potential that she was AFK, but it looks like she's just been picking her moments and been able to get away unspotted. 
Now here Eternal swings it in to the right here. He's got his sonar on, so I think he's partially expecting some torpedoes. We know the Turpets does have torpedoes, so it's potential maybe he's expecting the Turpets to maybe have chucked out some torpedoes. Gets that radar on, keep those enemies spotted for your friendlies. Massachusetts, a full HP Massachusetts as well, right at the back there. So uh, don't want to be sticking our neck out against Massachusetts, she will take advantage of you. Going on to the modules that he's taken, he has taken Aim Assistance Module 1, Propulsion Module 2, Steering Gears Module 3 and Main Battery Module 3. I can kind of understand uh, the reason for going for Propulsion Module 2 over Steering Gears Module 2, reason being is the Azur and Lane Commander, her base trait, it actually reduces rudder shift time, so you've already kind of got a rudder shift buff, buff uh, via that, and uh, therefore going for double steering gears isn't completely necessary, so you might as well take advantage of the, those propulsion systems which he's doing right now. Turpitz has been whittled down. It looks like the Turpitz is trying to just get into some cover. Barely any HP on that Turpitz. Could be quite an amusing kill. Let's see. Well, the Massachusetts that was uh, closing on the Turpitz has just gone, so uh, might as well take advantage of this while we still can. The uh, shells that went in against the bow did ricochet, so aiming for the superstructure this time and sealing the deal. Getting kill number four, it's uh, a bit of a kill still, <laughs> it only had about a uh, yeah, thousand HP left, but might as well take advantage of what we had can when we can. So the Massachusetts is almost uh, mirroring a turn of base here, going around the island. So, uh, oh, Atlanta, point blank range. Got to be cautious because the Atlanta will have torpedoes. And she uh, does think about using them. Getting the Citadel straight through the bow and down the length of the ship. Getting himself the Confederate Medal while we're at it. Pretty much overmatching that Atlanta all over. There's no way that Atlanta was going to be surviving that situation. The secondaries on the Massachusetts work in eternal over here, and he's in a very scary situation. Looks like the Massachusetts has all his guns trained on him. Whether or not he's going to be able to fire, because it looks like he's, yeah, he looks like he's doing an evasive maneuver to try and get around this island and try and get some distance between him and the friendly battleships and uh, other ships which are in the Bravo objective. Therefore, offering his nice soft stern to Eternal here, and of course, Eternal does have that improved. Uh, AP penetration, so keep aiming for that thinly armoured stern, knocking out her steering gears, and raking in about 3,200 or 300 damage per volley. And that's all going to add up. So just keep ticking her. And it's going to take her too long to try and get turrets round to you. She's going to try and get turrets round to you. She's certainly going to be able to bring the rear turret to bear the quickest. 2,400 that volley. And you see, it Pretty much all the Massachusetts can do here is just bend over and take it because he can't do anything about this. And the journal is just abusing him for all he's worth. Because the only thing that's coming up against the turtle here is the secondaries from the Massachusetts, which are uh, setting the odd fire every now and then, but he's uh, just damage controlling them as and when. And we should be getting kill number six now. There we go. Lovely jovely, jolly good show. And going on to the end screen, so we have 188,000 damage, getting Kraken Unleashed, First Blood, Confederate, Devastating Strike, High Caliber, um, 6 kills. Can't really complain about that all in all, and uh, 11 Citadel, so uh, that a AP salute or absolute um, ammunition uh, really coming through for him at the uh, end of the day which is all very nice very nice going on to the team screens and we can see that eternal has obviously come in as the runaway winner on his team with six kills getting 3524 ship xp with the 1.5 uh, multiplier for being on the winning team um so all in all jolly good show um amusingly the best enemy ship was the hood that he ended up coming up against so it kind of shows how the uh the other flank of the enemy team um, kind of flounders a little bit if their best player was the one who kind of 
got stuck in against the enemy at a uh, almost a losing battle on the uh, on the terminal side of the map. Going on to the economy screen, and you can see that he's managed to make himself four hundred and sixty eight thousand credits. Uh, that includes a reduction due to the uh, ship service cost, which is one hundred and fifty one thousand credits. And obviously, he does have a premium uh, account, therefore that is accounted in here. But obviously. Worth mentioning that the Azurlane Baltimore being a premium ship does have that additional credit earning potential, so that, that obviously does help in this situation. Now, amusingly, this is actually a potential damage record for the Azurlane Baltimore. The current one that is held on Discord is only about 150,000 damage, so 188,000 damage or nor is a well, it is a record breaker. Uh, whether or not Eternal is going to bother to submit this. Um, it's up to him. I'll, uh, I'll leave it in his capable hands whether or not he decides to do so. I know that um, sometimes uh, submitting damage records isn't for everyone's uh, taste. I have to confess it's not something I'm really personally interested in. Um, but if that does interest you, you can always do that. Well, as always, down in the description is the command build and the ship modules used by Eternal Biz during this submission, along with the email address to the channel if you want to send in any of your own game captures to be spotlighted during these community spotlight videos. Also, a link to Patreon if you want to support the channel on Patreon, as it is a non monetized channel. I'd like to say thank you to all the patrons and the subscribers, and if you aren't a subscriber, feel free to subscribe. Until next time, I'm the Gallop Major, and back to the port. Hey, hey, sail the wave, here comes the Gallop Major. Out of the way there, you fellows, unless you want me to run you down.